and it says that energy is not created nor destroyed. Or maybe neither created nor destroyed, but energy is just transferred from one form to another. Last time we met, we defined system and surroundings. Remember that? System is what we're interested in measuring, and the surroundings is everything else. When we're dealing with energy being transferred, we use signs of positive and negative to designate the direction of the flow of energy. So the positive and negative tells the direction of the energy flow. We use a positive to say something is gaining or absorbing energy. And what would the negative then be? Releasing energy. So when we take that metal that's hot and we put it into the room temperature water, the metal releases energy to the water. So we would say the energy of the metal, would, uh, the Q of the metal, the heat of the metal would be negative because it, the metal's releasing energy, and the Q for the water would be positive. And that's using the first law of thermodynamics. So let me give you a, a word problem based on what y'all are going to do in lab in a few weeks. Okay, so eventually we'll do this in lab, but uh, I'm going to give it to you right now as a word problem, so hopefully y'all be more comfortable with what's going on in lab. And in the lab, you guys are going to make all these measurements. You're going to record the mass of the metal and the temperature of the water and the volume of the water you use, etc. So to work this problem, I didn't leave myself a lot of room, but do you see that we have two different systems, if you will, that we're measuring? We have water and we have the metal. Do you know the mass of water or the mass of metal? Okay. You got 50 grams of water. What's the mass of the metal? 12.6 grams. S, do you know the specific heat of the water or the specific heat of the metal? Mm -hmm. You know, since it's water, you know it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. What about for the metal? That's what you're finding. Calculate the specific heat of the metal so you know you don't have that. Now, what about the delta T? Look at water. Do you know its final temperature and its initial temperature? Okay, tell me specifically what you subtract. What? Do you see the delta T for the water is 25.1 minus 22.6? Okay. Now look, what do you subtract? What's the final temperature of the metal or the initial? Do you see that the final temperature is 25.1? Because where is the metal? It's in the water. So the water goes up to 25.1. Don't they become the same temperature? So the final temperature of the metal is 25.1. What's the initial temperature of the metal? 100.5. So there's a perfect example of when a delta T is going to be negative. It's not when you're doing final minus initial or delta T, you can't always say the big one minus the little one. You got to know what final and know what initial are. So with all that information, guys, what can I calculate? 
don't I have enough information about the water, I have M, S, and delta T, that I can calculate Q for the water? Okay, so let's do that. What do y'all get for Q for your water? Do y'all get 523 joules? Is that what you said? Okay. Questions on that one? Okay, we're not finished with the problem yet. Do you see that the water absorbed heat? Where did it get the heat from? The metal. Do you see that the Q for the water is equal to the negative Q for the metal? The heat the water absorbed is equal to the heat the metal lost. First law of thermodynamics, and I'm using the positives and negatives to say water absorbed, metal released it. So in solving for heat for the water, now look what I have. I have, I have a Q for the metal. We can solve for specific heat. So if you rearrange Q equals MS delta T to solve for S, what's that going to look like? S is equal to... Q divided by M delta T. Hang on. It finally went back here. And, huh? What's M? Twelve point six grams. What's the delta T? Negative 76.4. Oh. Thank you. Negative 75.4. What do y'all get for S? Point five five one joules per gram time degree Celsius. Is that what you have? Can you tell me what metal it is? I think it's page 196 in your book. Uh, you can look at a table of specific heats. Looks like it's diamond, right? It's probably not, but in this example, it would match diamond. And that's what you'll do in lab to identify your metal.